What's up, guys? We're here. Welcome back to the channel. So today we are doing a patch notes review, just a recap from the Diablo devs campfire stream for the patch notes. Um, it came out yesterday. I had to work long hours, so I got to watch it last night. So I'm finally putting out the video today. So I just kind of wanted to go over and highlight a lot of things and changes that are coming to season five and just the game in general which i'm very excited about but i'm also not excited about some things so let's get into it again there's a huge patch notes here i'm going to leave this down in the description below if you guys want to read through it thoroughly i definitely suggest that you do now a lot of these notes are still the same previous notes that we had but then all the additions from the campfire stream are going to be noted in red and then we got some huge changes to all the uniques which makes it's going to make the game more fun the devs are trying to break the game, so it's going to make the game more fun. So we'll touch on those in just a second. But let's go ahead and break down some of this list because there's a lot of really good changes. So in general, previously, the player who opened the pit from the masterwork and materials would get all of the rewards and then everybody else would get penalized. This has been removed. It's an absolute dub. This is what we needed. I don't even know why that was in the game in the first place, but now that... Everybody can just farm the pit together in a group and just have an absolute blast and get all the materials. It's going to be really, really fun. I think that the devs really thought like, hey, there's a lot of feedback that the party mechanic is flawed. Yes, they decided to remove it. It's a good thing, especially considering the upcoming like dungeons that we're going to have in the expansion um, with, the, with the team mode in the expansion. So this is really, really good. I think this just makes the game much more fun overall. So a lot of this gray we've already touched on in the past. There's a lot of mythic unique changes um, to the druid in every single class. I'm not going to touch on those too much. It's small stuff here, but there's a lot of class balancing in the game. Um, the devs really felt like rogue was in a really good spot. There's some really good buffs to sorcerer as well as druid, which is really nice. We're really going to have to test to see how these things play out because a lot of it is kind of just number buffing and and then power buffing to a degree and some balancing to close the gap with the barbarian but um yeah it's really it's really weird how they're doing it but uh all unique items have received an update to better align them with their current design and philosophy for unique items there's a visual visual gallery at the end which we'll talk about i have some really good still images here to talk about some of these things but all of the classes got some really good buffs and then as you guys know there's some really there's some nerfs to Barbarian, but there's also some buffs. Like, Ren got buffed. Hammer of the Ancients got buffed. Up People got buffed. So, even though the key passes for the Barbarian got nerfed, which does hurt the class significantly, there's plenty enough buffs here from not only some of these skills, but some of the aspects, which is just going to make Barbarian still be good. So, don't get, don't get too down and out about Barbarian. Barbarian is still going to be just fine okay so like as the uh the ancestral force here got super buffed especially against bosses so there's a lot of stuff here okay um druid got some really good buffs the boulder rabies uh blood howl cataclysm perfect storm which is really cool aftershock so there's a really a lot of good buffs here just in general i mean there's like when you think about it in the wide lens there's some really good buffs here which i think are good necro got some really good buffs here for the primary um core stat they changed how the core stat actually works so now necromancer um barbar or necromancer sorceress and druid gain one percent increased skill damage for every eight primary core stat reduced from 10 okay so rogue is nine primary core stat and then barbarian did not change they're at 10 so they stay the same, and then these go up by two points, and then Rogue goes up by one point. This is to help close the gap as uh, as far as like power between Barbarian and the other classes because it's so tanky. Um, a bunch of lucky hit improvements for Necromancer, which is really cool. Um, they they might have the best mobility in season five, by the way. Like literally the best movement. It's going to be nuts. Um, a lot of good blood stuff here, which is awesome. Rogue got some really good um, increase. You see the same thing here. Every nine core stat which is cool. Um, they got the biggest buffs in Flurry for the most part. Flurry was really the only thing that changed from the PTR in our last notes because Rogue is just in a really good spot, so you're not going to see too many changes from them. Um, I still feel like Sork didn't get enough. That's just me, but we will test it out and see how it goes. Um, the new Wind Force, I think, is going to be really good. Uh, Explore Weakness. So Sorcerer here, again, now it's 8 every, but then Sork got an additional buff 
for their core and mastery skills, they got an additional buff of 25%. So when you look at the numbers here, it's the this this primary core stat stat changing from 10 to 8. Really in the big in the big is about a 25% buff. Um, and then they get an additional 25%, which is separate from this. So Sork's got a nice buff. We're gonna have to really see how it plays out. But there's some really good things that I'm excited about. Bouncy, bouncy Mario Fireball is probably gonna be one of my favorite builds going into this season. I think it's gonna be really good outside of the chain lightning. Um, Blizzard obviously is gonna be nuts. So there's gonna be some really good stuff here. I wish a lot of these buffs were just more, but um, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll have to test it and just see how it goes. Um, the some of the passes for Sork are really good. Um, I mean, the buffs are just good in general. We just need more damage. So we need really more damage. Like I don't like that the devs keep capping, like our our glyphs, like from forty to sixty percent now. Like just uncap this so I can be strong. Um, but besides that, let's get into tempering updates. Uh, so overall, guys, the class balancing is pretty nice. We're, they did do this. When you're looking at it like Barbarian, every other class, they did this. So we'll have to test it and see how it goes with all of the classes this season. I'm really excited to do that and just see how things feel. So tempering, they swapped a bunch of tempering um, manuals and just swapped what goes on them. So it should make it a little bit easier on what you're trying to get, which I think is good. Now, let's get into the meat and potatoes of the patch notes. Endgame bosses. This is a lot of big stuff that's being changed. So the summoning urn, you can just, as you guys know, you just repeatedly do that. You don't have to leave. Beast in the Ice is now not going to be part of a nightmare dungeon. It is going to be a standard dungeon with a very short... Um, path to him so it's kind of like a varshan dungeon it's just beast with the ice and uh that would be really cool so now you can just do this over and over and over again which is cool um now after defeating beast in the ice any players in the eternal realm can use leftover crafting sigils to immediately summon him again which i think is cool um they remove sigil dust material costs for beast in the ice which i think is great uh summoning varshan is only malignant hearts now they got rid of everything else which is fine um just to make things easier because every boss only has one material that you use to actually summon them. Boss ladder no longer drops rare items. This is very important. They now drop additional gold instead of rare items. So like when you would fight Duriel, let's say Duriel dropped 10 items and three of them were yellows, the yellow items, which are rare. Instead, those three items will now be gold, which is kind of nice. It'll help you get your gold count up. So it should help with this next part. So tormented bosses. The goal of the chin is of this is to broaden the chances of requiring mythic uniques. Now players engage with whatever torment bosses they have materials for and have a chance for an uber or mythic unique. So tormented bosses drop five times the materials now. So if, if you used one, like let's say you use the two and two to summon Duriel, it should, he should give you, or uh, like Varshan, if you use the one mythic or the one malignant heart to summon Varshan, you should get five back in, 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 in essence, right? Because it's boss materials. Don't get this confused with boss items. Rebalancing uh, boss loot to have party or parity with each other, which is great. All tormented bosses. This is the thing. We did the math, but I could be wrong. You guys let me know down in the comments. All tormented bosses now have five chances to drop a mythic unique at 1.5 chance each. In total, it's 7.5 to drop a mythic unique. This resulting in effect can it have a chance to drop multiple. So from what I understand this to be is, is that before you had a two percent drop rate out of all the items that dropped to actually get one and now they reduced all of the item drops to five chances in total each one being a half percent less from two to 1.5 but with this change you could have the chance to in theory get five mythic uniques from one boss so they dropped it a little bit this is just my math they dropped it a little bit for the chance on five chances instead of out of all the items that drop that it could be 2%. They dropped it, but you have the chance to get more from a boss. So we're, we're going to have to test this and see how this plays out, but I can't wait for the clip for somebody to get all five from a drop. That's going to be insane. Um, then they reduced the cost of the, the sticking in stones to, uh, from two to one. Helltide got some big buffs here. Um, Helltide Commander always dropped the hearts. They they rebalanced the hearts. I think it's going to be okay, but we'll see how it goes. A world boss in the Helltide zone drops three hearts, which is cool. Local events have a chance. Um, Helltide Whispers got buffed. Uh, Profane Mind Cages. This is the other big dub that's back. You guys already kind of know. But Profane Mind Cages are back. They stack up to three times, which will make monsters 30. Um, 
30 levels higher than you, which is actually the new EXP cap. For those who don't know, it used to be 10 monster levels above you, and that would be the max EXP you could get from monsters. Now it's 30 times, which plays into profane mind cages perfectly. So now you go into Helltide, you pop three profane mind cages, you will be getting the maximum amount of XP from monsters. Big dub. Um, Resplendent Sparks uh, can now be earned in both separate and hardcore and non-hardcore modes. That's good. Uh, Mythic Uniques uh, can now be acquired from Whisper Caches, the pre uh, Purveyors of Curiosity, and the Tortured Gifts and Helltides. I always thought you could get these, but now it's official. So now you can get these from there too. Uh, and then the chance for Mythic Uniques through beyond all non-bosses has been increased. We don't have an exact number for this, but it has been increased, which is good. Um, outside of that, guys, there's some miscellaneous stuff. Um, Helltide chests no longer contain obols, which is weird. Um, and then the crowd control stuff, when you are crowd control, you will be able to pop a potion, which is great. They reduce that. And this is the other biggest dub of the notes. Enchanting no longer requires Angel's Breaths, which was the bottleneck of Season 4. It requires a legendary crafting material for the item slot. So... Now it'll take jewelry for the sigils, the balefuls, and the coiling wards. You get these all the time, not only finding them on the ground, but salvaging all your items. So I think this is a big change and a big dub for this, okay? Um, they increase character level requirements for smoldering ashes. That's weird. Uh, they increase the max level difference, which is what I just talked about. Um, 30 times ahead, which is sweet. Um, so now you'll be able to get a lot more XP for your character. And when you power level characters, it's going to be much easier. Boss health has been reduced across the game. This is what it was before. And now it's half on World Tier 2, 2,500% less on World Tier 3. And then World Tier 4, we dropped 24,000% boss health. So this is going to be a big change here, man. The pit got their boss damage reduced by 66%. The shadow pit, even though there's going to be a debuff, it should help, but there's still going to be some one-shotting, but still. The fact that we can do the pit in, in duos, trios, in quads, and just get maximum re rewards for everybody, I think this is going to be a good balance. And then there's some, some bug stuff here, some gameplay bug stuff, but yeah, guys. Overall, I think that the devs are going in a direction to help break the game. Now, let's go over some of these items, right? Let me just scroll to the bottom. Let's go over all of these... Uh, these uber uniques in this stuff here because it's absolutely crazy so Tyrael's might this is what they're talking about when they want to break the game they've changed literally every unique in the game oh not to mention now that we can temper onto uniques maybe not mythic uniques but i think we can temper onto regular uniques which is just absolutely busted so you can see here that Tyrael's might the old one was already good but now Movement speed, more max res, 60% max res, and damage reduction. Tyrael's Might is absolutely busted. They really wanted these uber uniques and just regular uniques, um, like the Ring of Starless Skies, just to be absolutely busted. Look at this. 18% to all stats, movement speed, all res. Insane, right? Starless Skies, attack speed, crit chance, lucky hit, core skill, busted, right? Now let's go to some of the uh, multi-class. Or no, like let me go to let me go to Sork real quick. Let me zoom you in. So if you look at some of these, like bouncy bouncy gloves of the Illuminati, like oops. Oops. So like crit chance, fireball attack speed, uh plus to two mana when fireball explodes, plus two to mana ball, like fireball. And then look at this. Right? Like look like look at this. Let me zoom it in. Then then you look at then you look at the gloves and how they work. Look at this big change here. This is nuts. It used to be 20% less damage. Now you can get it to 0% less damage, which is just a huge damage thing. Now it travels and exploding at full damage. That's crazy. Super powerful stuff here. Starfall Coronet got a big buff. Blue Rose, look at this. 10% crit chance, 170% cold damage, 350% ice spike damage, chance to be cast twice, does an insane amount of damage. So the devs have really gone in. Staff of Endless Rage, I'm telling you, Bouncy Bouncy Fireball is going to be insane this year. Mario Fireball, nuts. Look at this. Plus 312 intelligence, 50% projectile speed, chance to be cast twice, plus six to Fireball from, from like not even being on here, which is crazy. And then every third cast does up to 90% more damage instead of 70. I'm, like They're really trying to break the game, and I think that this is just going to be based on we want to have much more fun than we did in the past. And I think this is a way to help when there's balancing. So 
Uh, there's some really big things coming to the game uh, up to season six and then beyond. Um, they mentioned in the video that they are going to be rebalancing all the classes except for Barbarian as far as their class specific specializations to help bring that balance closer, which I think is great. But overall, I'll leave this down in the description below, guys. You can comment. Let me know what you guys think about everything, all these notes and changes uh, coming to Season 5. I'm really excited to play. It is going to be a short season until we get to October for the expansion. But I think we'll have fun in the process. So I'm going to be starting Sorcerer, I think, this season. I'll break down a video on that. But, uh, yeah, it should be really fun, guys. So like, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new. And as always, stay gaming, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.